exercise 3-5 on page 140 through 141. Um, part A says to prepare the adjusting entries for the seven items described above. So we're going to have seven AJ AJEs. So we'll set our paper up, date column, counts, and then of course we need our debit and our credit columns. So for the first one, um, Dan Luther Company borrowed 8000 by signing a 10% one-year note on October 1. So, so we're going to use the formula P times R times T to figure out the simple interest for this adjustment. Now the principal amount, also known as the face amount, um, happens to be 8000 and our annual interest rate was given 10%, so that's 0 0.10 times um, the time. Since we're looking at um, for the year ended um, in December, what we're going to have to do is figure out how much interest has um, accrued. So we're going to go ahead and see from what date the note was signed, October 1. So we're going to count all of October, November, December, that happens to be three months, so three over 12, because your time is in terms of a year, and that should give us $200 for the interest for that three month period. So for our journal entry, we're gonna debit interest expense, and we're going to credit interest payable. Not the notes payable, because the notes payable is gonna have the face amount. And that'll be a debit of 200 and a credit of 200. And this is an example of accrued expense. Just an entry. Okay, number two. And I'm just putting two for the dates because they're all going to have December 31st. So that's December 31st, and this will be December 31st as well. So next one, account of supplies um, on December 31st indicates that the supplies on hand are 780. What I recommend you do is use the T account so you can visually figure out what your entries are going to be. And so for the account balances that were given. Um, supplies is currently at 2450 That's the current unadjusted balance. And supplies expense is at zero. Now our goal is to have our ending or adjusted balance for supplies agree to what we have on hand, and that was 780 Okay, that um, means we need to figure out the amount that was used for the period of time. So you're going to take the 2450 And you are going to take the difference of so 2450 minus the 780. Um, that'll be 1670 will be the amount used. So that means you're going to debit supplies expense for the amount used. So that's 1670, 1067 under the debit column, and 1670 under the credit column. So we are increasing our expenses and decreasing our supplies as that. And this is an example of a prepaid expense adjustment. Third one, depreciation on the equipment for 2014 is 1000 This one they've told us the amount, so we're just going to debit depreciation expense. And we are going to credit accumulated depreciation, um, the equipment account for what, 1000 and 1000 And that's an example of a prepaid expense adjustment. Um, the next one, number four, we are going to see Dan Luther Company paid $2,100 for 12 months of insurance coverage from June 1 through 2004, what, June 1, 2014. So, what we're going to do is if it's 2100 for 12 months, we're going to figure out how much is it per month. So, 2100 divided by 12, and that gives us 175 per month. Now, from June 1 to 1231, that will give us seven months because we count all of June. So we're going to take the seven months, multiply by the 175, and we're going to get 1,225 for the number 
of insurance that has expired. So on the last day of the period, 1231, we will debit insurance expense 1,225, oops, sorry. Well, I can't erase, oh, that's 1,225, and we will credit 1,225 to the prepaid insurance account. Okay. And that's another example of a prepaid expense. So let's go ahead and see. We need to do five. Okay, for question five, we have on December 1st, Dan Luther collected 30000 for consulting services to be performed from December 1st, 2014 through March 31st. So what I recommend you do is use T-accounts here so you can visually see what the balances are. So you have unearned service revenue um, in the amount of 30000 on the credit side. And then you had your service revenue, which they don't tell us what the balance is, so we're just going to list it here. We don't know if there's a balance in the account. Um, then it goes on to say that from December 1, December 1st, through March 31st, um, we collected in advance the 30000 So if we count all of December, all of January, all of February, and all of March, that ends up being four months. You want to be sure to count all of December since it's the first. And if you take the 30000 divided by the four, you will get 7500 per month. So if it's now December 31st, the date of our adjusting entry, we'll have our date here. This is also number five. Um, we'll have our account, column for our account. Then we'll have our debit. And we'll, of course, we'll have our credit. So what that means is we're going to debit the unearned revenue, service revenue, for the 7500 which is for the month of December. Then we will credit service revenue for the month of December to go ahead and recognize the earned revenue. And that would bring that down to what, 22, five, which is three more months that will be earned in the month or the 2015 year. Number six says Dan Luther performed consulting services for a client in December. So it ha occurred in in 2014 so that was the period in which it was earned and the client will be billed 3,900 for um, services rendered so here for number six which will occur on December 31st we're going to go ahead and recognize the bill but since we haven't received the cash we'll set up an accounts receivable and the amount of 3,900 we will then credit the service revenue and this is an example of accrued revenue. We're receiving the cash after we've actually um, earned the revenue. Oh, up here, this was an example of a prepaid revenue. Prepaid revenue, known as unearned revenue. And it's just in chapter three. And the last one, seven, I'm gonna go to page 141. We have Dan Luther pays his employees total salaries of 9000 every Monday for the preceding five-day work week, which is Monday through Friday. On Monday, December 29th, employees were paid for the week ending December 26th. All employees work the last three days of 2014. So for this one, I like to use a calendar. So we'll have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday and Friday and the Saturday and Sunday we, we're not going to include but the 29th was Monday 
The 30th is Tuesday. The 31st would be Wednesday. There's 31 days in the month of December. And then the 1st and the 2nd would be January in 2015. We want to accrue for the three days that um, occurred um, in 2014, even though they're actually not going to be paid until the 5th. The 5th is the next payday. So what's going to happen is we're going to have our 1231, our date for our adjustment, and we are going to debit salaries and wages expense. And we will credit salaries and wages payable. Payable to liability and expense is an expense under the equity. So the dollar amount, if we know that 9000 is for the entire week, we will take the 9000 divide by 5, which is 1800 per day, then take the 1800, multiply it by 3, and we will get 5400 for the three days in December. So that means our debit will be 5400 for the salaries, wages, expense, and our credit will be 5400 for the salaries, wages, and payable. And this is, this is an example of accrued expense. And then on the 5th, and I didn't ask for that, but I just want to go ahead and show you what it looks like. On January 5th, we'll go ahead and debit salaries, wages, payable for 5400 We will debit salaries, wages, expense for the two days that relate to the new year, because this is 2015 and this was 2014. So 2015, we will debit this for what? Mm, 3,600, which is two times 1,800, so it's two days in the new year. And then we will credit cash. This is our subsequent entry, journal entry, and then the 1231 was our adjusting entry. But this is not not required. And you're done.